everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Heather, I am a styling, skincare, hair care, self care enthusiast. I don't have any training in anything, I just read a lot, watch a lot of YouTube, and I have friends and family sometimes ask me what I know, so I just figured I'd start a channel to share my thoughts on things. So, um, what I wanted to talk about today is not a super fun topic, um, it was about my last trip to the dermatologist. So I mentioned in my Jones Road video that I had, you know, a little something above my eye here and, you know, I'm so pale um, that I like to go to the dermatologist relatively frequently. So um, uh, basically we as humans, um, we're, well, we as humans in the modern world, we're supposed to go to the dermatologist about once a year uh, after we hit the age of 40. So I am not 40 yet, um, but because I'm so pale, uh, I just figured I would, you know, sort of go a little bit more frequently. Um, so uh, there's a lot of different things to think about, you know, uh, with regards to skincare and uh, going to the dermatologist. So your family history is one thing. Uh, my family is mostly Italian, so I think my skin is pretty like hearty. Um, even when I do get burned or I'm in the sun, like it's it's pretty resilient. Um, additionally, like I don't have a ton of wrinkles. I don't think for someone my age that doesn't use uh, different fillers and things. Uh, my mom's skin looks beautiful, and even my dad, like he's never worn sunblock like in his life until now because we make him um and his his skin looks pretty good as well like everyone in my family always looks younger than they actually are because of uh, how we take care of ourselves um so that was one factor to consider but like look at me look how pale i am like i have a million things all over my face right i have you can see this thing on my arm there's just all kinds of stuff all kinds of places so um Something, and by the way, I am not, as I mentioned, I'm not a dermatologist, I'm not an esthetician, I don't have medical training in these things. So, um, you know, see a dermatologist, I'm just gonna share sort of anecdotally what I know about this stuff. So when you're looking at your skin, what you wanna look for, um, like some, some things that might be sort of awry, is stuff that does not have, um, you know, even edges, basically. So if it's like sort of like a blob as opposed to a circle, that could be some kind of indicator. If it's a bunch of different colors, that could be some kind of indicator. Um, if it's sort of scabby, that could be kind of a problem or raised. Um, and also if something has changed recently, that could be part of a problem as well. So like just looking at, like just pick one arm and you can see I have all of those different types of things just on one arm. So like this over here, that's an irregular shape, all right. Um, this over here has some darkness in it a little bit. This guy right here, you can't tell, but it's raised. So obviously a dermatologist is gonna be able to tell you way more about your skin and about what is actually um, harmful to, to what is going on here. Um, so I went, you know, you go for a full body skin check. So you're just kind of there in your undies and, and you know, your dermatologist looks you over. Uh, my dermatologist is fantastic. I actually switched dermatologists because I didn't, I didn't like the last one. I felt like they didn't like actually look me over that much. Like I was in the appointment for three minutes and this doctor, she really, my new doctor, you know, she has a little magnifying thing and she was just looking all over the place at all different things. So last summer I got um, a cyst removed from my back. I was about the size of a golf ball. And um, so this year I was like, oh, I'll just, I'll do my skin check, but um, I have some anxiety problems, which I might've mentioned before. And so what happened is there's this thing. So you see this right here, this used to be a freckle and it was a raised freckle that had like wiry hairs growing out of it, which was great. And also I thought it had changed color. I thought the inside was darker than it used to be. And it was freaking me out. So um, I wanted to go to the dermatologist, not only for my skin check, but for this thing in particular, because I was like, it's changed. That's no good. I don't like it. So I do have some family members that are in the medical field. Neither one of them are dermatologists, the ones that I talk to the most. Um, and there's no dermatologist in my family as far as I know. Uh, but uh, so one family member, I texted them, I explained what was going on and they're like, oh, that could be melanoma. And like, it could be melanoma, but when you know this person has anxiety problems and like they haven't gotten it checked yet, like why is that the first thing that you jump to? So that terrified me. So uh, I, I texted the second relative and I said, you know, I was kind of freaked out and they were like, you know, if you have pictures, can you send pictures? And I, I sent as many pictures as I could find. Cause I couldn't, you know, you never really noticed this kind of thing, but it was a pretty dark um, freckle. So like I went back through my pictures and I was like, do I have any pictures of it where like I could just zoom in? And so I sent some comparison pictures and they said, you know, it's hard to know exactly what it is until you go to the doctor. So I went to the doctor and um, they did a punch biopsy here, which basically, um, I don't know exactly what the tool looked like because I didn't look at it, but they injected some lidocaine, which is a numbing agent here into my arm. And then when whatever they took was done, it just looked like, it looked like a, a, a hole punch basically was punched right here. And they just basically removed the entire freckle. And so throughout my skin check, my doctor noticed something on my leg 
and she's like, I don't like the way that this looks. And so it did have irregular edges and it was way darker than anything else that was on my legs. So I'm a pale person, right? So I have some kind of dark ones. So like this, this one here is kind of dark, but the one on my leg was much darker than that. And it, it had those, you know, strange edges. So she's like, I'm just going to take this off. It's like, okay. So she took, she took like a razor blade basically. And she bent it with her fingers and she went like, Zoop! and she just took it off like that with the, she did the lidocaine first. So the numbing agent, I didn't even feel the lidocaine. So I know it can be scary to kind of like get things cut off your body. Uh, but you know, if your dermatologist is, is good, um, then you know, you really shouldn't feel that much of anything. Um, I didn't even feel the lidocaine, honestly. Um, I think I am a little bit like a little sensitive to needles. Um, like I felt my, my vaccine, my COVID vaccine more than I felt the lidocaine. So for whatever that's worth. So she took that off. And so I wasn't really thinking much of it. Um, and then the pathology report comes back and I'm not, you know, I don't really know how to read this, uh, but it said on there that it was an atypical Clark Nebus. And I was like, okay, I don't know what that means. I mean, it was, it, that's what it is. All right. So I didn't really think a lot of it because that what the, what the office tells you is like, if you don't hear anything back within a week, then you're probably like, it's fine. The, the, we'll, we'll contact you in a week. And so it had been six days. I get that path report back. And then a couple hours later, I get a phone call from the doctor's office. I was like, oh no. So they said the thing on my arm was a big nothing, but the thing on my leg, the way they explained it, it was kind of, it, it, it freaked me out the way they explained it because they said, it's not cancer, but if it is, we caught it early. And I was like, what, is, what does that mean? <laughs> um, so that really, that really freaked me out. So it's sort of precancerous. It could sort of turn into cancer. It wasn't cancer, but basically what they had to do is I had to schedule another, um, another doctor's appointment so that they could kind of like, scoop out more of my leg to make sure they got all of these abnormal cells. So once again, I texted the first relative and I told, I told them what happened and they're like, oh yeah, melanoma is the worst. It goes into all your organs. And I'm like, why are you scaring me? I, I don't want to be scared. Okay. This is freaking me out, especially because the appointment uh, between me getting these results back and me getting this thing taken off of my leg again, um, there was three weeks in between those appointments. So I had three weeks to just think about this and mull it over and da da da. And so I reached out to the second, um, the second family member and I explained, and they actually said, Hey, I worked with Wallace Clark who discovered this type of growth. And what they said is that this particular type of growth is, um, it's basically, you know, it's sort of abnormal cells and you should get weird moles like this removed, but it's actually nothing. It's actually good that we know it's an abnormal Clark nevus because it tells us more about what type of thing it actually is. So I was like, okay. That, that really, um, you know, assuaged my, my fear quite a bit. And so um, when I, uh, you know, first got that, that thing taken off of my leg, I just had like this, you know, it was about a dime sized um, scab, basically. It took a little while to scab over, but because it was that bent, you know, uh, razor blade thing, um, uh, it was just, it was, it was almost like a scrape. That's the way it was healing. So I went back in and they said I was gonna have to have some stitches. And I was like, that's fine, okay. So, um, you know, you sit up on the table and everybody's all gowned up and everything. Um, and so uh, I didn't really look again, uh, once they did the lidocaine, I, I wasn't looking, like I looked a little, but I didn't look a lot. <laughs> um, and so it really didn't take very much time at all for them to get a little bit deeper and remove the entirety of the scab. And then the doctor um, stitched it together. So I actually, I have four stitches um, in my leg right now. It would have been three, except um, my dumb butt earlier in the day, I had a headache. And so I took one ibuprofen and one acetaminophen together. And so um, uh, that actually works as well as um, an opiate for most people, by the way, for pain. So that's a fun tip for you. Um, so one of those, I want to say it's acetaminophen, is actually also a blood thinner because they asked me when I got to the office, did you take any aspirin in the past 24 hours? I said, no, but I did take these things. And they're like, oh, well, that's still a blood thinner. I was like, shoot. So I should have gotten three stitches, but I got four because I was bleeding a little bit too much. So I wanna show you what this looks like in a picture. Um, sorry, not sorry for my leg hair. As you can see here, um, this looks, uh, my Italian teacher actually said it looks a lot like a spider. So you can see all four of those stitches. Um, and it's, you know, it's a little bit red. Uh, the first couple of days I had to keep it entirely covered. And um, they recommend, by the way, that you put Aquaphor or Vaseline on it, uh, not antibiotic ointment, um, not Neosporin types of things. Uh, I forget why they have the reasons though. And um, so now the past, uh, now it's been a week since I've gotten the rest of it taken off, uh, I have been um, not putting a bandage on it, but because it's on my leg, I do have to be, like if I wear jeans, I should probably put a bandage back on it. So I'm gonna go back to the office in a week. Uh, so the stitches will be in for two weeks total and they're gonna remove the stitches and just make sure that it's healed properly. Then I'm gonna follow up, uh, you know, with, um, with Vaseline or with Aquaphor 
and also I've been using um, um, Mederma for scars. So I've been putting Mederma on this guy on my arm and I'll start putting Mederma on my leg. But I got a phone call today, the pathology came back, they got all of the edges of everything, um, and uh, I don't have cancer, everything is fine, I don't need to get anything else removed. <sighs> so now I can finally breathe, I don't have cancer. Um, and I know it's a, little, it's a little dramatizing to say, I could have had cancer, and I know the title of this is a little clickbaity, and did that on purpose maybe. Um, but honestly, like this is why, um, what's his face died? There's been a bunch of people that have gotten precancerous things that they didn't get removed, they didn't know they were there. Um, and they spread to different places. And melanoma with skin cancer is, is no joke. It can really spread to all of your organs and it's actually uh, a pretty prevalent cancer among young people. Um, so because people like they don't think much of it, they don't think it's gonna go anywhere, they don't, they don't like look at their bodies, they don't meh. So it, it does tend to happen um, you know, more than you would sort of expect skin cancer to turn into something. So um, anyway, the point of this is, uh, if you are able to, I know everybody is not able to go to doctors um, all the time for, for different things, for various reasons. Um, it is uh, very privileged to have health insurance in the United States and be able to do this. Um, and I know some people are terrified of doctors, uh, but I, do, I would encourage you to go to a dermatologist if you can, especially if you're over 40. Um, also, uh, if you are a more darkly complected person, you can still get skin cancer. You should still wear sunblock. Um, if you uh, don't go outside very much and you know you're just you're in your house all the time you should still wear sunblock so if a room is lit by natural light or it could be lit by natural light that is enough light to um, to, to damage your skin um, so you should be wearing sunblock every day at least on your face uh, apply it every two hours if you're outside in the sun um, and just uh, just take care of yourself so I hope this helps somebody um, I think I had a really positive dermatological experience besides, you know, the anxiety of waiting for my results, which nobody could really help, and the anxiety of waiting for my next appointment. Um, so if you can do that for yourself, I would highly recommend it. I hope this helps somebody. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.